Hey there everyone, Smolt here and thanks for joining me today. For this video I am doing a watercolor piece and if you haven't quite caught on just yet, this is a artistic nude style portrait that I'm doing so if that hasn't scared you off quite yet, this is also going to be a demo slash first impressions of these watercolors that I'm working with. These are new to me, these are the Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus Fine Art Watercolors and I bought two of the 12 half ounce sets so I have 24 colors and today I'm working with five of them here and the uh, color rundown is there's alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, uh, viridian green, yellow ochre, and blue aqua over on my palette that you can see to the left of my drawing there and I wanted to be able to record myself actually mixing the paint so I'm not sure how well that translates to um, being sped up, but it is there. Uh, now these are an interesting form of watercolor because instead of being a dry pan or a creamy tube, these are liquid and they behave almost like inks do, except they're still, they still maintain the uh, watercolor uh, qualities to them and I think that's pretty cool. Now these describe themselves as being, uh, quote, Hydra's fine art watercolor is made from the finest artist pigments, which have been chosen for extreme light fastness and brilliance. Hydra's gives to the watercolorist a new freedom to blend and intermix while maintaining the transparency and luminosity of the color. Titanium white can be intermixed to achieve an opaque gouache watercolor. End quote. And I've been playing around with them for the better half of the last month or so. And this is actually the first uh, painting that I've actually done with them. I've only been doing like color swatches and I have like this big color chart of them so that I could get a better idea of what they were capable of versus my last couple watercolor paintings where I went in mostly blind. Now these watercolors have been a lot of fun to use. They are super, super pigmented. They apply quite smoothly. The flow is wonderful. I really like it. The pigmentation is phenomenal. Little, I'm barely using any and I'm already getting so much pigment on my brush that I'm being super super careful in this uh, in these first couple of steps here because I don't want to use too much color as I want this to be very soft. I do feel that I need to work with these very very wet which is absolutely fine by me because that means I can stretch the pigment very very far. I've barely used any of my paints, not that I've been painting a whole ton, but um, when I was done with this piece I was, I probably used maybe six or seven drops of the ochre yellow and that was the most of any of the colors that I used. All the rest of them I barely used three or four drops of the color and each drop is very tiny and I feel like I could complete a very large piece with very little paint um, this piece is only 7 by 5 inches, which is not a very big piece, but I did not need a l I barely needed any paint to get this finished. Um, there are a few flaws that I've come across with these. Um, one of them is that they do settle when they sit in the bottle, or if they sit anywhere, they do settle a little bit, so you do have to uh, shake the devil out of them a little to um, to ensure an even consistency in them, but that seems to be the way it is with anything in a liquid form, like all my liquid inks and such, I have to shake them all, um, nail polish, things like that, that's not a big deal to me. And the other real con that I've come across is a very minor problem, if at all, and it's I'm probably, I'm pretty sure you've been able to see it as I'm working, but in between takes, the uh, liquid watercolor will dry on my palette, and when I go to re-wet it, it feels like it re-wets funny. Straight out of the bottle, it's a very smooth consistency, but after it dries and I apply water to it to try and reconstitute it, it feels flaky and kind of separated and that it doesn't reconstitute to the same consistency as it was before, which I think is rather odd, but it doesn't seem to affect the way it lays on the paper, only just how you go about picking it back up. 
So I've abandoned, or I've mostly abandoned rewetting during this, and I just, um, whenever I'm done and I know that it's going to dry, I just wipe it up and start fresh, which is absolutely fine, because like I said, I've barely used any of the paint, even having to replace the color each time. Um, since completing this piece, I have uh, gone up with a different way to store them, that way I don't have to keep replacing as much paint every time, and I can explain that a bit more if anyone's interested in that. And those are my initial findings for uh, these watercolors. Otherwise, I am quite enjoying them. Uh, for this piece, like I said, this is an artistic nude portrait. And the girl is actually an original character of mine. Her name is Luck. And she's one of my favorite original characters. Though I feel like if I go into detail about her, a lot of people would not like her because she does uh, exhibit a lot of undesirable character traits. I have a tendency to be a fan of undesirable characters. Like, the characters that I tend to like in fiction tend to be also the characters that everyone is supposed to hate. And Luck here is not a hateable character, or she's not meant to be, but she is different in both good and bad ways, I feel like. And I will talk more about her character as I do art of her, because I do want to feature her more on my channel, as she, like I said, I do like this character quite a lot. Um, the reason I went with an art, with a artistic nude is because I happened across this gif when I was going through Tumblr, and I just looked at it and it's like, that is my character right there. And so I decided to illustrate it. I, I used it as a reference. Unfortunately, I do not know where the GIF originated from. I did a um, reverse Google image search and it couldn't find it. And it has since been lost somewhere in my dash like months and months and months ago, so I cannot find it anymore. And I'm not even sure how to go about finding it. But seeing it just resonated with me. And this is the, uh, well, partial end result. We're almost to the end of the video. We are actually getting to the background. Um, You'll have noticed that I started painting in the character, and normally I will paint in the background first, but for this piece I didn't really have an idea of what I wanted to do with the background. You can kind of see in the back, I, um, I sketched in some little circle pattern in the back, and I was hoping that uh, I would figure out what I was going to do with them as I painted, and the inspiration wasn't coming to me. So I, I winged it. And for this piece in particular, I felt like the hair, her makeup, and the background were the hardest parts for me to try and render because I didn't know what I was doing. I was winging it. I promise I'm an artist and I kind of know what I'm doing. No, no, not really. <laughs> but uh, during the background, I filled in like the little diamond areas between the circles and as I was doing that, um, somehow I put my brush down and I just smeared uh, color over this one small area and I just had a, oh, um, well, what a, um, I, I can fix this, I need to fix this. And so I... I finished all the little diamonds and then I quickly grabbed a cotton ball and decided how do you hide a tree? You hide it in a forest. So I made a forest out of this one little green smudge. And then from there the background kind of created itself. Thank God. Or well, thank you Bob Ross. <laughs> but I got the idea to fill in the circles with the ochre yellow color to try and hide the green a little bit more and from there I started texturing the or I started building up the yellow and a texture started to form and so I went with it and I ended up with these almost flower type things someone said they look like cupcakes so maybe they're cupcakes I don't know it's open to interpretation they're whatever you want them to be <laughs> But I'm really glad that worked out, because um, that's one way to, to save your happy accidents, just make flowers, and yeah. 
and I should be along with the uh, final details. A lot of the detailing I didn't film as I did them with uh, some polychromos because I was hoping those would work out as well. I went in with them blind as I don't have a whole ton of them, but it worked out and I'm and I needed to not record them because I would have been too close to the canvas and my head would have just been in the way the entire time. But uh, yeah, that is it. That should be about it for my video. I'm wrapping up in about a minute. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today and hopefully I will see you in the next one.